Yeah, I am house sitting again, so uh, obviously I'm in a different place. And uh, this did enable me, though, to see uh, WWE Extreme Rules 2017 live. So uh, you're getting the recap a little bit earlier than usual. Well, I'm recording it earlier than I usually do. Uh, it'll still probably be up sometime Monday morning. Um, anyway, our first match is the kickoff show match, which was uh, Kalisto versus Apollo Crews with Titus O'Neil. I don't recall this being announced. This must have just gotten announced today because I don't remember it being announced earlier. Uh, anyway, um, right off the bat, Kalisto countered a flapjack into an arm drag. Kalisto then countered a headlock into a head scissors. Uh, Kalisto hit a reverse head scissors, in a, a reverse somersault into a head scissors, I mean. Uh, he followed then up with a hashtag dive. Uh, another hashtag dive, this was Apollo Crews coming off the second rope outside of the ring. Um, they then went to the commercial break. Coming out of the commercial break, Crews hit a big vertical suplex for a two count. Uh, Kalisto hit a sunset flip for a two count. Uh, at this point, uh, Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews began arguing. Uh, this kind of caused some distractions. Kalisto hit a hurricane run on a DDT for a two count. Kalisto countered a tilt roll slam into a DDT for a two count. Uh, Cruz countered a crossbody into a fallaway slam, which for some reason Michael Cole called a Samoan drop. Uh, it's at this point O'Neill and Cruz started arguing again. Uh, O'Neill got up on the apron, Cruz was arguing with him. O'Neill was trying to like slip uh, a foreign object to Cruz, I think, and Cruz was uh, having none of it. And uh, this enabled Kalisto to do Selena Del Sol off of Titus O'Neill on Apollo Cruz for the three count and the victory. Um, this match is pretty boring. <laughs> um, it, it, it did not bode well for the rest of the night. Uh, it probably would have been. It probably would have been better to let Cruz win. I mean, I, I think he needs to turn Apollo Cruz heel. He needs something. I mean, he's getting a little bit of something with the whole Titus brand thing, and look for a while like maybe they, they were going to actually turn him heel, but now they just seem to be pulling him out of it. And it just doesn't seem to work. Okay, our second match of the night, and uh, the first show of the match, or the first match of the show proper, I'm sorry, uh, is the Intercontinental Championship match, Dean Asenbros versus The Miz with Maurice. Uh, in this case, the title can change hands on a disqualification. Um, immediately, Miz tried to start getting, uh, tr started trying to get uh, Ambrose uh, disqualified. Um, actually, one of the first things they did is they introduced The Miz. And then they went straight into the uh, introductory vignette, which I, I hate when they do that. Just either show the entrance or show the introductory vignette. You don't need to do both. Um, anyway, um, like I said, Miz started slapping Ambrose. was trying to get him riled up. Uh, Ambrose hit a spinning elbow. Ambrose uh, drove Miz into the ring apron. Uh, another hashtag dive. Uh, um, Ambrose then grabbed a steel chair and started coming after Miz with the ref... Uh, intervened. Uh, Miz hit a DDT on the ring apron. Miz then hit his uh, backbreaker into the neckbreaker move. Uh, followed that up with uh, three corner clotheslines after three corner drop kicks. Uh, Ambrose knocked Miz off of the top rope. Ambrose then hit a flying elbow. Uh, Ambrose did a, a fisherman suplex for a two count. Uh, in the midst of this, Miz was trying to climb up again. He, and Ambrose went for a power bomb, but Miz pulled the turnbuckle pad off. Ambrose started to whip Miz into the corner turnbuckle that was now exposed, but then uh, the ref got in the way again. Um, Ambrose then locked Miz into a figure four. Um, it's then, uh, uh, sorry, Miz got to the ropes. He then started asking, he had Maurice come up on the apron and told Maurice to slap him. 
But uh, the ref was kind of hip to that. He said, no, no, I heard you say slap me. And that's not getting a DQ. Um, so he also ejects Maurice from ringside. As she's going up the entrance ramp, uh, Am uh, Miz whips Ambrose into the referee, knocking him out of the ring. Uh, the ref thought the, that Ambrose hit him, starts going to call for the DQ, but then uh, Ambrose cl crawls back into the ring, is still in the ring as he's trying to plead his case with the ref, and Miz comes up and hits the skull-crushing finale for the three count and the victory, your new Intercontinental Champion, The Miz. Um, probably the match of the night. Uh, well, there's one more that might qualify too for match of the night, but um, yeah, this was all right in the storytelling sense. Uh, there were a, a couple points where it dried. I think a little bit, there was a little bit too much of the Ambrose doing something that might get him DQ'd and then it not falling through. All right, our third match of the night is the mixed tag match. Noam Dar and Alicia Fox versus Rich Swan and Sasha Banks. Um, Alicia and Sasha started it off. Uh, Sasha hit one move and Alicia immediately got up and jumped into Noam Dar's arms, uh, which qualifies as a tag apparently. Um, Swan comes in, hits a hurricane runner from the second rope. Uh, Dar then goes and leaps into Alicia's arms. Uh, uh, Sasha did a countered a tilt a whirl into a bank statement. Uh, Alicia uh, then Dar pulled Alicia's foot under the ropes. Uh, Alicia missed a running boot in the corner. Uh, Swan got a tag in and hit Dar with a flipping leg drop. Uh, Swan hit his big roundhouse kick and Sasha hit a flying knee on the outside of the ring. Sasha then hit a flying knee onto Noam Dar. Uh, that Rich Swan got. Uh, Dar back in the ring and hit the Phoenix Splash for the three count and the victory. Um, yeah, this match was also pretty boring. Um, it, this thing had a weird build up to it. I mean, the feud between Sasha Banks and I would have much rather just had an Alicia Banks Sasha Banks uh, uh, Alicia Banks Alicia Fox Sasha Banks match, and then you know maybe have the guys interfere and then have that lead to maybe a tag match down the line. It just didn't seem to make sense at this point. All right, our fourth match of the night is the Raw Women's Championship Kendo Stick on a Pole match. Alexa Bliss versus Bailey. Um, kind of right off the move, uh, right off the bat, Bailey went for a quick pinfall attempt. She didn't even go for the stick right away. Um, eventually, she got started climbing up, going to the stick. Uh, Bliss pulled her down. Uh, then Bailey did get up and grabbed the kendo stick which then fell to the ring below. Uh, so no one had quite a possession of it. Uh, eventually, um, the, both girls tried to go for the stick. Bailey, uh, Bailey managed to knock Alexa out of the ring. Bailey got the stick, started chasing Alexa around the ring to it. Bailey hit the Bailey to belly while holding the kendo stick, but she landed on it. Um, it's at this point Alexa Bliss came into possession of the stick and started smashing Bailey around with it. Um, then uh, Alexa Bliss set the kendo stick up in the corner and whipped Bailey into it and then hit the DDT for the three count and the victory. And yeah, this match was pretty bad. I mean, the item on a pole match rarely is good. It's, I don't think it's ever really uh, worked. Uh, the other problem too is I believe the stipulation going into this was whoever pulled the kendo stick off the pole got to use it it wasn't automatically introduced into the match, which means Alexa Bliss should not have been able to use the thing. Um, yeah. I mean, those two were coming off uh, the, match of the, night, uh, the match of the show uh, after payback, and this is how they follow that up. I mean, uh, basically this is just an indicator that one of the matches went a little longer than they thought they were, and so someone had to get cut short, and yeah. Okay, our next match is the Raw Tag Team Steel Cage Championship match. Um, the Hardys versus Sheamus and Cesaro, sorry. <laughs> uh, now here's the stupid rule that they had for this one. Uh, this is basically both partners had to escape the cage. That was the only way uh, a tag team could win. No pinfalls or submission in the cage, which, that's just stupid. I mean, what's to prevent them from just running up the side of the cage? It, I mean, that's basically all that happened through the thing. I mean, it's just that's right off the bat, Sheamus and Cesaro started running up the side of the cage. Uh, the Hardys pulled them out. They did brawl briefly. 
Uh, Cesaro tossed Matt into the cage. Jeff pulled Sheamus uh, from the cage while Cesaro was pulling Matt from the cage. Uh, the Hardys did hit a poetry, two poetry in motion moves where they sandwiched Sheamus and Cesaro into the cage. Uh, Sheamus power bomb Cesaro and Jeff Hardy off the cage. Uh, Sheamus and Cesaro then hit a double team uh, from the top rope on Matt. Um, both teams then uh, began brawl, uh, climb, started climbing the cage walls and were brawling on top of it. Um, Jeff got knocked out of the cage completely. However, they did not win the match. They still needed Matt to get in. Uh, so Jeff was waiting on the outside, waiting for Matt to get out. But he's now in there with two other guys getting his butt kicked. And eventually Jeff had to come in. Uh, Sheamus and Cesaro hit a super white noise on Matt, and that was in the, that's when Jeff got in back in. He had a whisper in the wind, uh, basically took out all four guys. They were all Jeff was barely fighting. He started pulling Matt to get out. Around the same time, Cesaro started pushing Sheamus up the cage. They got to the point where they're both in position, and Sheamus and Cesaro just beat the Hardys out of the cage. Uh, Sheamus and Cesaro are the new tag team champs. Uh, this match really should have been better than it was. Like I said, put the dang pinfall stipulation. If you still want to do that exit thing, I guess that would be okay. But, uh, yeah, again, like, it's just, it's having to be both, again, you're really telegraphing the ending of the match when that happens. <sighs> okay, our next match is the Cruiserweight Championship Submission Match. Neville versus Austin Aries. Um, Neville immediately started going after Aries' knee. Um, they're selling a knee injury with Aries. Uh, Aries managed to do an Australian roll into a kind of a hammerlock head scissors combination. Um, another, another point, um, Neville telegraphed for a back body drop and Aries actually cartwheeled to avoid it and went for a last chancery. Uh, they brawled to the outside of the ring. Aries dropped Neville, uh, down on the ring apron. Um, you see, uh, this is on the ring apron. Aries hit a double axe handle on the outside of the ring and uh, re injured his knee. This enabled Neville to start going after his knee again. Um, Aries came back though, he hit multiple shin breakers onto Neville's knee. And it's funny because uh, both guys' signature submission holds don't focus at all on the knee, they focus more on the arms. And even the announcers acknowledge this. Um, Aries countered a top, roof, top rope move into a figure four. Um, Neville eventually got to the ropes. Aries hit a neck breaker through the ropes. Neville dodged a cross body and locked on the rings of Saturn. Or no, it was not the cross body. It was a missile drop kick. My mistake. It was a missile drop kick and locked on the rings of Saturn. Uh, Aries countered into a rings of Saturn of his own. Neville then super kicked Aries. Aries hit a sunset flip power bomb and locked on the last last chancery. However, in the midst of doing that, both men rolled out of the ring. Neville did tap, but it was on the outside of the ring, so it doesn't count. Uh, Aries then went up to do a suicide dive, hashtag dive, and Neville dodged it, and that enabled Neville to get Aries back in the ring. Uh, Neville went for the red arrow, Aries tried to roll out of the way, but he actually rolled into the red arrow, and so Neville landed on Aries' back, and immediately went right into the rings of Saturn, and uh, Aries tapped out soon afterwards. Uh, this was a pretty darn good match. Uh, t t again, a few dead spots in the middle of it. But other than that, a uh, pretty enjoyable one. So at least that had the sign of that going for it. And this leads us to our main event. The Fatal 5-Way Extreme Rules match for the number one contendership for the Universal Championship. Bray Wyatt versus Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. Um, right off the bat, uh, Wyatt went after Finn Balor, Rollins went after Joe, and Reigns just kind of stood there and watched as everyone else fought. Uh, they started brawling outside the ring, Reigns again continued to stand there. Wyatt uh, then eventually entered the ring and began brawling with Reigns. Uh, Rain, uh, Samoa Joe came in, went for a Samoan drop on Reigns, and then Reigns countered out of that and hit a Samoan drop of his own. So you had this really unique point where you have one Samoan performing a Samoan drop on another Samoan, which was then countered into another Samoan drop. So, um, Rollins then came in and break up a Wyatt Joe double team on Reigns. Um, Rollins then hit a suicide dive onto Joe, hashtag dive. Uh, Balor then hit a running drop kick on Wyatt. Joe countered Reigns, uh, 
Reigns tried to do his drive by drop kick on Wyatt, but Reigns or Joe countered that with a big clothesline. Uh, at this point, um, uh, Wyatt and Joe just began double teaming everyone. They threw everyone in the ring stairs. They started pelting uh, Finn Balor with a steel chair. Um, Wyatt DDT Rollins on the ring steps. Uh, Balor kind of countered out of a rear naked choke and hit a double stomp on the Joe. Um, Rollins got back into this and hit a double blockbuster on Wyatt and Joe. Uh, followed that up with another hashtag dive. Um, Wyatt hit the sister Abigail and Rollins, but then Joe broke the pin. At this point, the alliance falls apart. Uh, Joe went for the uh, coquina clutch on Wyatt, but then Balor came in and broke it up with a chair. Uh, Joe and Balor were brawling to the outside. Reigns speared uh, Balor and Joe both through the announcer's area barricade. As this was happening, uh, Bray Wyatt was set up on the announce table. Seth Rollins got up and had a frog splash outside of the ring to the announce table. Uh, Joe and, uh, sorry, Rollins and Reigns got back into the ring. They started brawling. Um, Raw, uh, no, sorry, Raw, Reigns hit a Superman punch. Uh, it's at this point, Wyatt came in, went for the sister Abigail, but Reigns speared him. It was then that Bray, uh, Finn Balor came in. Reigns went for a spear on Balor. Balor countered that with a sling blade. He then hit, Balor then hits the coup de gras, and then Joe immediately comes into the ring and locks on the coquina clutch. Uh, Balor passes out to our new number one contender for the WWE Universal Championship. That match to take place at Great Balls of Fire on July 9th. Yeah, the next pay-per-view, or the next Raw-branded pay-per-view is Great Balls of Fire. Uh, will be Brock Lesnar versus Samoa Joe. So, uh, hey, that's the first time I believe for that match. So, uh, that should be at least really good. Um, and it's probably um, the best thing to come out of that. Yeah. Um, overall, the main event match was pretty good. Uh, there was a few dead spots. Like I said, there was just a lot of... Wyatt and Joe beating on everyone for a, a good solid five minutes. Uh, it was after a, it got kind of boring, but other than that, uh, it was a pretty good match. But uh, anyway, uh, the show overall, though, yeah, um, mostly disappointing. Uh, the women's championship match, I just I went on about that. Uh, the next gender tag match was, yeah. Uh, the kickoff show match wasn't even good for a kickoff show match, so yeah, that's kind of driving this down and down. Um, like I said, the cruiserweight match, the Intercontinental Championship match, and the main event were pretty good, so I am going to give this show a C. Uh, I mean, it was pretty average. I, I, it wasn't the worst experience this year. I mean, I've had be I've had worse, but yeah, this wasn't uh, very thrilling either. Okay, so the next video up after this should be uh, the random trade review on Battle Chasers. I've just started scripting that. Uh, see you all next time.